This video was made possible by Skillshare. Learn for free for two months by signing up at skl.sh slash hai13. If you're ever invited to Guantanamo Bay, don't go. Without any context, it sounds like a pleasant place, but visitors have reported the water activities being less than enjoyable. Of course, the name of the American Guantanamo Bay military prison is known worldwide, but it's worth pointing out that that's here, in Cuba, which is not exactly the friendliest country to the US or vice versa. This is a US territory, and it probably seems weird that the US would have territory in a country so hostile to it, at least historically, but it does. In fact, Guantanamo has thousands of residents and an enormous naval base, so here's your 90 second history of why Guantanamo Bay is American. In the 19th century, Cuba was part of Spain, but it didn't want to be part of Spain, so it revolted. The US didn't like Spain, so it was down with the idea of Cuba not being Spanish, so it sent some military there to help with the revolt, but then one of the American ships exploded, a bunch of people died, the press blamed Spain even though there really wasn't any proof, and the US was like nah and went to actual war against Spain. They called it the Spanish-American War. Now that it was actual war, not just Pretenzi's war, the US sent a ton of troops to Cuba, kicked out the Spanish, and decided Cuba was theirs, but then Congress said that the US wasn't allowed to keep Cuba. They had to give Cuba back to Cuba, but Congress also said that they could keep some land for military bases in order to, in some super skeptical quotation marks, enable the United States to maintain independence of Cuba. So, in 1903, the new Cuban government, once again in big old skeptical quotation marks, agreed to lease the land around Guantanamo Bay to the US government indefinitely for $2,000 in gold coin each year. Of course, 50 years later, there was yet another Cuban revolution and Fidel Castro went all communist on the island, but of course, the US didn't care, and from Cuba's side, it's hard to ask the world's strongest military power to just leave. Quite kindly though, the US has increased their yearly payments to $4,085 since gold prices have increased. They now send checks instead of gold, but these annual checks have not been cashed since the Cuban Revolution, except for in 1959 when it was deposited, at least according to Fidel Castro, by mistake. So still today, this totally non-controversial and totally legit base remains. Of course, it's known as the home to the notorious Guantanamo Bay prison, but it's a lot more than that. It's a fully-fledged US naval base, home to almost 6,000 people. Like really any US military base that's not in an active war zone, Guantanamo Bay is home to civilians, both non-military workers and the families of many of those working on base. That means that there are American kids living in Guantanamo Bay, more than 300 of them. Being in a country that officially doesn't actually want the base to exist, Guantanamo is the only base where personnel are not actually allowed to leave the base. They fly in at the start of their term, and they fly out at the end without ever going into actual Cuba, which means that it's especially important that the base feels like home. All US bases put particular effort into making sure they seem American. That's why they have McDonald's. Seriously. The Guantanamo McDonald's is of course the only McDonald's in Cuba, and in fact, it's one of many American brands there. There's also a Baskin Robbins, a Subway, a KFC, and a Pizza Hut. US bases will also build houses that look like they belong in any old American suburb. These are the actual houses on the Guantanamo Bay base. It's not just there. Here are the houses on Ramstein Air Base in Germany, and here are the ones on Cadena Air Base in Japan. Making the housing look American is a sort of psychological trick used to reduce homesickness, but the main thing they need so the kids have an American experience growing up is an American-style high school, so Guantanamo Bay has exactly that. In Guantanamo Bay is the W.T. Sampson Elementary and High School. This school operates exactly like any high school within the US. It's accredited as a US school, and all its students and teachers are American. Really the only thing that makes it unique is that it's in Cuba, and by being that, it is the only accredited American high school in a communist country. The school even has a track, field, and sports teams. Since it's the only school on base, the teams play against recreational adult teams for those working on base, but the one sport that they don't have is football because, and this is the real reason given, they figure it wouldn't be a great idea to have middle and high schoolers play football against soldiers, which seems smart. If you end up visiting Guantanamo Bay for other reasons, one of your first steps should be buying a black market smartphone because while you won't be allowed to attend the school, you will be able to use the Skillshare app to learn what you want to learn. Skillshare, you see, has over 20,000 courses, so if there's something you want to learn, whether that be self-defense or knife skills, Skillshare probably has a course on it. You can do anything from learning cool bar tricks to building up skills that could eventually land you your dream job, and as mentioned, they have a mobile app where you can download classes offline for when you're on the go or in areas without service. What's best is you can get two months of their premium membership for free and support half as interesting by going to skl.sh slash hai13.